pray and uh, we'll get started. Father God, we thank you for the word of God this morning and we thank you for your people. We thank you, Father God, just for the spirit of God being here to give us insight and revelation of the word into our lives. We thank you, Father, for the word of God uh, working in us. And Lord, we just pray that we will never come to a place where we will have a lethargic attitude towards your word. Mm -hmm. But Father, we thank you for keeping the word fresh and exciting to us. And that Father God, even showing us what we need to do to, to keep our expectations high where the word of God is concerned. Now Father, we love you, we thank you for this word, and we praise you, and we just give you glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I've been sharing with you, simply entitled, Diligence, a Key to Prosper. Diligence, a Key to Prosper. And I said, some of the things that a lot of times we think is the big things in our lives that are keeping us from prospering. But really, it's a lot of small things. You know, the, the, little, the little foxes spoil the vine. You know, a little leaven leaven the whole lump. You know, and so it's the little things in our life. And one of the little things is diligence. That we don't see the necessity of diligence in our lives as believers. Uh, we are diligent about a lot of things. We're diligent about our hobbies. We're, we're diligent about uh, the things we feel like causes us to prosper. But many times when it comes to God, we're not diligent. We're kind of lethargic, lackadaisical. You know, I, I tell people all the time, you know, we can put in 40 hours a week on our job and be there every day on time, faithfully, never miss, go to work sick. <laughs> Come on, folks will show up coughing. You think, why do you stay home? <laughs> so they want that check. Because they see the, they see the benefit <laughs> of the job. But yet, at the same time, we don't treat God like that. You know, when we need a break, the first thing we break from is God. When we need to rest, we want to rest on Sunday because, you know, we, can, we, can't, we, can't, we can't afford to rest on through the Monday through Friday because we got to get paid. But see, that's not, that's not diligent where God is concerned. And we don't prosper the way the world prospers. <coughs> that's what we can believe. We prosper according to, according to our willingness to obey his word right. and to make him the centerpiece of our lives. Amen. Now I want you to turn with me this morning to uh, uh, Psalm 42. Psalms 42. And it's funny she just sung this song. This last song she sang was the, the verse I had written down. Oh, okay. As the deer going in and panting for the water brook. But Psalms 40, 40, Psalm 42. And we're going to look at, we'll start at verse number one. Read this from. I'm going to read this from. Let's see. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll read. Uh, starting verse one. It's a, for the choir director, a maskil by Koraz descendants. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When may I come to see God's face? See that that that's really. In order to, to, to long after him, there, there's going to, be some, have to have to be some diligence on your part. Now, we, here's how we define diligence. Here's how, here's how diligence is defined. It means careful and persistent work or effort. Careful and persistent work or effort. And so, if you're going to be diligent, you've got to be careful and persistent. Persistent doesn't mean you try to weak and quit. <laughs> Come on, persistence means you keep going and going and going and going and going. You know, it's kind of like, it's like the man who was laying at the pool of Bethesda where all the sick and lame went, lay. Mm -hmm. That man didn't stand a chance of getting in because mm -hmm. there was always somebody there before him. <clears throat> but he had been in condition for a very long, for years, 30 some years he had been, I think, I think he said 30 something years he had been, 30 or 20 or 30 some years he had been in, in that state. And yet he still kept coming to the pool when he didn't stand a chance of getting in. But that's persistent. He had made up his mind that if God got to heal everybody, if I got to be the last one, I'll be last. Mm -hmm. But God will make time to get to me. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be persistent, and I'm going to be here mm -hmm. when the angel comes and trouble this one. Mm -hmm. That's persistence. Because, you know, it's amazing. I've heard that preached so many times, and, and people say that man didn't have faith. <laughs> and I, I have to chuckle at that, because I'm thinking, you know, when was the last time you stood outside the door, the doors of the church for 30 some years waiting to get your blessing? Say that. Mm -hmm. Say that. When you didn't even stand a chance to even get in the building. Mm -hmm. Okay, you make it a week sometimes. Mm 
This man went on for 30 to 30 some years in that condition, still saying, I'm still coming to the place where I know God is moving. Because God's going to make time to get to me. That's persistence. And to say, you know, it, and I was amazed when they, when they, when they talked about the story, talking about how Jesus came up to him and said, would thou be made whole? And he says to Jesus, sir, I have no man. I have no man. And so, see, see, that's how we do it. God asks us what we want. We, we start making up excuses. He wasn't making an excuse. He didn't know that was Jesus. See, we read it. We're, come on, we read it in Revelation. Now, we know it's Jesus talking to him. We know it's the Messiah, the anointed one of God. He doesn't know that. All he knows is that God is coming at a certain season, troubling this water, and at some point in time, uh, so the first one in gets healed. So what is his condition? I need somebody to help me get to the pool when the water is stirred. And so when he says to, he says, sir, he doesn't say Messiah. Oh, Jesus, you're the anointed one. Can you get me to the pool? Now, he doesn't know who's, all he knows, he's laying there saying, he's probably staying there. After all these years, started laying there saying, Lord, I wish I just had some help. I wish I had somebody that could get me to where you are. I wish I had some, some assistance to get me to the pool when the pool is stirred. And so when a man comes up who he doesn't know, says, sir, do you want to be whole? Now, what does he know? What does he understand about healing? He understands that healing is in that pool. So what he is saying is, if, if you send me somebody, I'm willing to at least go with them and get some help to get to the pool. Most folk ain't willing to do that. Say that. They sit right in the pews and you cry out of need, and, and they know it's their need. They won't come and walk down the aisle because they, they're afraid what people go think. Mm -hmm. That dude had so much faith. He, I mean, he had a lot of faith. And, but, but see, God honored his request. Now think about this. And this is talking about diligence, because think about this. Before that, before Jesus even get there, he tells his disciple, I must need go through this way. Mm -hmm. So apparently something was calling him to go in that direction, which I really we know the Spirit of God was leading him to go, to go this way. When he gets to the pool of Bethesda, the Bible says where all the sick and the lame lay. So let me ask you a question. Why would Jesus come to a pool where all these sick people in the city lay? Why would he step across all these sick people to find one guy on the back row in unbelief? That doesn't even make any sense. Jesus is not going to change direction to go find somebody in unbelief. He didn't have to go far looking for unbelief. No, what he saw was a guy in his, that in his persistence and his diligence, this man's faith is calling to me. And I need to go find it. And then I think about that verse that says, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Why? Because the lads are typically the ones who have to be diligent and persistent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he went to the one who was last and made him first. And the wonderful thing about God, about God, since the man couldn't get to the pool of living water, what God did was wrap a man up in living water. <laughs> and sent the living water to the man. Amen. And honored both his requests. Number one, he gave him, he gave him some physical help by sending Jesus in a physical body. But he met his spiritual need too by bringing Amen. living water to the man. Amen. So God gave him a double one. Couldn't give him double for his trouble. <laughs> Didn't he? Amen. And, and, and listen, and when Jesus said to him, Would you, you know, rise up and rise, take up that bed and walk, there is no hesitation on his part. But apparently, he had to have a real strong expectation. Mm -hmm to respond mm -hmm. to those words that way. He could have said, wait a minute, uh, you didn't get me to the pool. Could he, could have said, he didn't say that. He had, when Jesus said, rise up, take your bed and walk, that dude jumped right up. Mm -hmm. He had to be expecting something. Amen. Amen. And, he was, and he had to be expecting an extraordinary that was not the ordinary. The pool was the ordinary. But he had prepared himself through his faith and diligence that he was ready for an extraordinary. All these years I put in, oh, I'm getting mine. <laughs> so the man has a lot of faith, but he was diligent. And he was, he was careful and persistent through his work and effort. Mm -hmm. He showed up every day. Some folks don't even show up every day. Mm -hmm. They only show up once a week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he showed up every day, waiting for that angel to come and trouble that water. Dude, it takes a lot of faith to do that. Mm -hmm. A lot of faith that God, God, to know, he had to know that God wanted him healed. Or he wouldn't have kept coming every day. Nobody continues to do something that they don't see an end result to. Would you go to a job not knowing whether or not you go get paid? No, you go quit. Like, shoot, well, I'm going to show up for you. Know, I'm going to get no check this week. 
So you only go, you only diligent, persistent in those things that you see that in, at the end of it all, there is a benefit to your life. So then ask yourself a question, why are people diligent to look towards the Lord? Because they don't see it as a benefit. And God takes too long. <laughs> so I need to come up with another way. I, I got to find a new hustle. A new way to get things done. That tithing thing don't work, even though you only tried it for a month. See, you had sold out on it. It's got to work because God says so. So I've got to do it for the next 30 years until I see a result. Then I'm going to keep Amen. doing being faithful because I know God is faithful to his word and he cannot lie. Amen. Amen. That's diligence. Diligence isn't moved by what it sees or doesn't see. Diligence is, is really true biblical. Di diligence is moved by what you know. Mm -hmm. And you have to know the promises of God mm -hmm. or you won't be diligent to the word. Come on, man. That makes sense? Mm. Amen. All right. So, but look what he says in Psalm 40, 41, 42, verse 1. As the deer longs for a flowing stream, so my soul longs for God. Now, now, what's the purpose of wa water? To refresh. To refresh. When people need refreshing, why is God the last thing on the list? Why is he the last one people go to? When people need a refreshing or healing in their body, why is God the last one they consider? I'm talking about in the church. I'm talking about the world. I'm talking about in the church. They'll believe the doctor before they'll believe God. Say that. He was wounded for your transgression, bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. With his stripes you were healed. <laughs> yeah, but the doctor said. Mm -hmm. See, doctors can only give you facts, but God gives you truth. Mm -hmm. And truth can always change facts. Mm -hmm. Come on, amen. Truth can always change the facts. But we make the facts more real than the truth. Because see, the, tr the facts usually have a good, long history record to follow it up. Fact, they had cancer. Fact, they died. They had cancer. Fact, they died. And so you have all these facts mm. that you've been exposing yourself to, but you have a truth here that says, by a strike, you were healed. And you don't see a lot of that, so it's real difficult for you to believe for that, because I ain't never seen nobody healed of that before. But you got a lot of facts. Mm -hmm. So then how do I allow the truth to override my facts? i got to be diligent with the truth. I gotta put it before me every day. I gotta quote it every day. I gotta speak it every day. Amen. I gotta see it. I gotta meditate on the word every day. Mm. I gotta act on the word even when it doesn't look like it's working because I know it'll work just because God said so. Amen. Amen. That's diligence. And many times people are diligent based on what they see. Mm. We are diligent based on what we know. Amen. We Amen. know the faithfulness of our God. Amen. We know that we can do all things through Christ's strength. And we know that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Every tongue that rises against us, we'll prove to be in the wrong. Amen. But you got to know that. Amen. And knowing that only comes through your experience with the one who has given you his word. Amen. And many times people don't spend time in the presence of God. But we'll spend time with TV God. Come on, amen. Mm -hmm. We'll spend time with, with talk shows, Steve Harvey, and all that stuff. We really like Steve Harvey. He's funny. He ain't giving you life, though. Mm -hmm. He's not giving you truth. Say that. Yeah, but he said, it don't matter. He's like, if he's not giving you life, he's not giving you truth. Then guess what? He's not giving you the tools necessary for living every day. Amen. You know, I'm like down in him. But I'm saying we run to so many things that don't give us the truth. All right, now. And we run to things that, that, that are always telling us about the facts. I'm going to show the facts of life. But guess what? <laughs> You better not live by the facts of life. <laughs> you have to live by the truth of life, which is w w according to God's word. So be it, amen. amen. See, the Bible says you bless come in and bless going out. You're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. Yeah, yeah. I know it says that, but, but, but. There is no but. Because see, when a person says but, what they're saying is these facts are more real to me than what God's truth says. Mm. And thus, we are diligent with the facts. All right. Oh, yeah. News come on, says tornado coming. Guess what we start doing? We start talking about the storm coming. We start seeing our house blown away. All because they, they talk about the fact. It touched down in, in Hermitage. Oh, it's coming my way. And we, we keep focusing on those facts. The facts. The facts. But then the truth is, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Satan is called the God of the air. Mm -hmm. But we serve, the, we, we, we serve the God of heaven and earth. Amen. And the God of heaven and earth is greater than the God of the air. Mm -hmm. 
That's why the Bible says you are in the world but not of the world. Why? Because you are a heavenly citizen. Which means you have do more dominion than the, the enemy in this world system. But we don't want to speak to that to that to the storms of life because the facts have said tornadoes come and they blow everything over. So that this case sera sera. No, we believe the truth. Amen. amen. Come on, amen. amen. We believe the truth of God's word. I mean, it was last night we were dad's house. He had, had a. I was sitting there in the kitchen and was talking on the phone and. I can't hear this. The water was raining. I heard the water. I heard some more clank, 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 clank. I'm like, sit behind me. I look behind the stove and water's coming through the vents, just pouring through the vent. And I'm thinking, man, that, that's not good. <laughs> you know, water's pouring in your house <laughs> from, your, from your wall to your stove. And uh, so apparently it was coming through the, it's coming through the vent, so we'll get it fixed. But, but I was talking to a friend of, friend of mine. She said, well, uh, why don't you just uh, speak to the rain? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. I need to do that. So it's no, and this is not just that. As soon as I said, no, I said, I said, Ryan, I command you to stop in Jesus' name. It just stopped. I'm not talking about 10 minutes later or not. I mean, just like, as soon as I said it, within like 30 seconds, it stopped raining. Right. I said, you can rain everywhere, but don't rain on this house. Right. You can rain all around me. Because the earth needs some rain. Mm -hmm. Just don't rain on this house. Because we got a leak, and we don't need water for the house, and we ain't going to be up all night trying to catch water. No, no, no. I got other side. I got to go preach in the morning. I need my sleep. So I did, I said, I said, I said, I said, right in the name of Jesus, I command you to cease. And it just stopped. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. I wasn't amazed that it stopped. It was supposed to stop. Say that. I, didn't, I didn't get a phone call my friend. Woo! -hoo! I spoke to the rain and it stopped. <laughs> it didn't happen. I went to bed. All right, man. Why? It's supposed to obey me. Mm -hmm. Come on. It's greatest. He that is in me, then he that is in the world. But see, we don't believe that. We, 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 we are amazed when things like that happen. That's our norm. Come on now. That's, that's, our, that's our norm. When Jesus spoke to the storm, they were like, they were all amazing. Like, what, what are y'all tripping about? The storm's supposed to that. stop. I said, that. stop. It's opposed to it. He wasn't surprised. He was, he was like, oh, please. That's supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. Remember when you sent his disciples out by twos and, and they came back with Joseph saying, even the devil's about your name? He said, don't read Joseph over that. Stuff. Mm. He said, Rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Jesus. In other words, you shall know a stuff that's supposed to be your norm. Mm. But it's not. Why? Because we live in a fact based world. And the truth is so muddled today, y'all. Mm. People aren't diligent about the word. No, here's, here's, why, here's one thing about diligent. Diligent means you have to go after something, don't you? Mm. You have to be. But see, we are so. Let's think about this. We are so inundated with the word of God in this side. It's a system. You can turn on TV, it's on, turn on radio, it's on. Just like, you, you don't even have to go nowhere to get it. It's just inundated with it. So we, we don't feel the need to be diligent about the Word because we have such ready, ready, readily access to the Word where we feel like we don't have to be diligent. But here's the problem, y'all. There's a lot of stuff that's out there that they're labeling as the Word that isn't the Word. Say that. And when you just let down your guard and just, well, I just turn the radio on. Pour it in, pour it in. You don't know what you're letting to pour in. So you have to be even diligent in terms of how you guard your ears about what you hear. Because you can't listen to everybody. Because mm -hmm. everybody's not preaching the truth. Amen. 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 They're not. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday. She was saying, she was sitting in this class and, and uh, they were talking about, uh, you know, the women were talking about marriage and relationships and stuff. And she said, one of the girls said, she said, uh, well, I really don't know who I am. She said, I don't know who I am. And let me ask you something. If a woman don't know who she is, how is she going to know what she's going to get mm. in a man if she don't know who she is? Mm. And so my friend of mine said she was sitting there listening to that, and she said, hold up. She said, we need to stop and pray. We need to stop and get some word on this. Mm. And, and she said, but one of the women said to her, said to the girl, oh, honey, it's okay that you don't know right now. Mm -mm. Shut the front door. It is something wrong. No, no, there is a problem because you can't even talk about relationship until you find out who you are. Amen. And so my friend was kind of fishy. I was kind of like, you know, like, hold up. We, we, we need to stop. We need to deal with her question here. We don't need to move on. We can't talk about relationships. She don't know who she is. Did somebody help her? Give her scripture. Give her something. And that's the truth. We, we just because, folks, listen, just because it's in a church, just because mm -hmm. they say it's going to be a class on whatever, don't mean you're going to get the truth. Amen. Doesn't mean that. That's why you got to be diligent about how you hear. 
you got to be on guard about what you hear. Because everybody that's talking isn't really talking the truth. It can sound similar to the truth. It can have some, some, some things that coincide with the truth. But it may not be the truth. You know, changing one, changing one verse can mess up a whole lot of verses in the Bible. I mean, it's true. You got to throw away a whole bunch of stuff. You don't believe in tongues, you got to throw away a lot of your Bible. Because then Paul said, don't forbid to speak with tongues. See, you see what I'm saying? So you start, you start picking and choosing stuff you don't want to believe and stuff. You go throw away a lot of the Bible in your life. You, that's why you need to keep an open and teachable spirit. But you got to be diligent. You can't just let everybody try to teach you everything. Okay, you gotta be picking about who you let teach. Listen, I refuse to sit in a church. If I'm in a, if I'm in a church, and somebody's up there preaching something, I know going is not the truth. People ask me, what, what should I do? Uh, leave. Well, I don't want to offend. You be better to offend them than to offend God by saying, hey, listen to something Say that's that. gonna get in your spirit and mess up your faith. Say that. I, I don't sit down, well, I don't want to offend you. I'll offend you. I'll see you guys. Excuse me now. I got to go. Now, I, don't I don't care who, I don't care how many people shout and running out. If it's not the word, I'm getting up and leaving. Come on, man. Come on, amen. amen. Hallelujah. We don't want to offend people. You know, we, I don't want to offend God. Mm -hmm. I don't want to offend my father. I don't care about people. All right, man. Because you, you can't live and not offend people, y'all. Yeah, you do know that, right? Amen. <laughs> You cannot live without offending somebody somewhere along the line. So if you go offend them, at least make sure you're offending them because you choose to obey God. Amen. So just offend them. I'm not standing here and listening to this garbage. I'm out of here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I mean, I, now I used to. I used to you know, sit there try to you know, man through it. I was the wet crap. And I said to myself, hold up. Why am I wasting my time doing this? I'm up out of here. <laughs> Good that they doing, you know. I mean, seriously, I mean, I watch them treat the offering like it's mm -hmm. an auction. Mm -hmm. Anybody been one of those besides me? It's like an auction. Yeah. We got 10, we got 10. Come out oh, somebody yeah. come, come and give me a 20, 20, 20, 20 in the back, bro. Come on, because I do it. I get a 50. Can I get a 50, uh, 50 in the back? Uh, now, you still ain't doing That's not enough. That's not enough. We need to send that tray back around again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to start it off with a 100. Can I, can I have 20, 20 people? I'm matching my 100. 20 people. Match my 100. 20, 20. That, they got 10 over here. Can, okay, you can't do 100. Come on, they, they, they do 50. Can you do 50? And you sit there and you sit there and crap. And you know good and well God ain't telling you to give. Mm -hmm. But you give anyway under the pressure. Mm -hmm. You're not being diligent. <clears throat> You're not being careful and persistent. You just do it because, well, yeah, they mean you good because everybody else is good. I guess I'll do it too. I stop giving like that. I don't care. I don't care how good you say. I don't care how fancy you say. If God ain't telling me to give it, I'm not giving. If I don't got peace about it, I'm not doing it. All right. I am not going to be pressured into giving. That's why we don't do all that right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, that's why I don't do. It. I don't do all that. If you can't hear God, what's the point? Isn't that the truth? If you can't hear God because He's the one that's going to bless what you do, not me. Because right. if you do it as unto the church, then guess what? You happens when you come up short. You expect the church to bail you out every time. Well, I gave to church. Now you've been given to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And if you gave it to the Lord, then the Lord becomes your resource to bless your life. Amen. Amen. So don't get offended at us because we say, well, we can't do it this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Can man. I get a hoop hoop? Okay. Hoop Amen. hoop. hoop. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the truth, though. But if we don't teach people right, we don't share the word with them. Think of, as a pastor, i got to be diligent in my study to make sure that what I give you is lining up with the word of God. And not just my opinion and my feelings about things. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, look at Hebrews chapter, chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. See, we need to be diligent in our seeking God. As the deer panted for the water brook, so my soul thirsts after thee, O oh God. You've got you to make him a priority. I so said you've got to make him a priority. Amen. For Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And, and let me say this while you turn in, that your diligence is directly tied to your faith. Mm. The word faith means confidence. Where's your faith? Where's your confidence? Where's your confidence at? Now it's, it's easy to say, it's easy to say, and, and I'm, I'm gonna tell it myself, it's easy to say, well, I trust God when you got a really good paying job, health care, 
benefits, insurance, 401k, pension. It's all stacked pretty nice. It's easy to say, I, I, I trust the Lord. Oh, I try, I trust the Lord. Hallelujah. He's my resource. He's my sustenance. It's crazy to lose all that and see what happens. Come on. Now, how, how real is that to you? You see what I'm saying? Well, you know, in, in those times where things are going well for you, thank God that things are going well for you, but you better be reminding God that He is your resource. Amen. And, and, and trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding or your bank account or your checking account, your 401k and your pension and your job. But trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge or be familiar with Him and He shall direct your path. Amen. 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 That's, what's, whew, that's what we've got to come to. But look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says, Now without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why? Because if you're not faithful, you're not going to be diligent. Faithful, faithful people are diligent people. You will never find anybody faithful who is not also diligent. If you are a person who, who is considered to be faithful to your job, it is because you are diligent. It is because you show up when you're supposed to show up, probably show up early, you stay late when you need to, you volunteer for other people's positions and work stuff that they, they're not doing themselves, and you'll step in and get it done. You will be considered a faithful worker. Because you show yourself to be diligent. Amen. Amen. But God is the same way. If you if, Listen, if you say you're faithful, you should be diligent. I'm a faithful member of that church. I've been a faithful member for 35 years. You've been coming late like, for the last 20 years. <laughs> and then get mad because somebody's sitting in what you consider your seat. They should know that's my seat. I've been here 20 years. All of a sudden, you got your seat marked. So you don't feel like you have to be on time because you go your seat, your seat gonna be waiting for you. As though you privileged just because you've been there for twenty years. Oh Lord. Shoot, we'll, I said we'll switch. What we'll do? We'll take your seat, move it to the back, and put us seat right there. Yeah, you know, we know your seat's still here. It's in the back because you coming always coming late. It's your seat. See, you, you, you just sit down. See your butt print still fit right there. You know, but but we ain't putting your chair. Your seat gonna be back there. Because it's not fair to the people who are faithful to be here on time that you come in all late and want your seat up front. So everybody can see you walk down the middle of the aisle. <laughs> oh, no, that's not going to happen. All right, Hebrews 11 says, it says, Now without faith it is impossible to please God. For the one who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who what? Diligently seek, search for him or seek him. Now, now, look what it says. You must believe that he exists and that he rewards those he, that he rewards. So that's what's going to promote faithfulness in your life. The fact that he is alive and he will reward me. That will make you diligent. That's when you know people really don't believe that God is who he says it is. he is. Because they're not faithful to the word. They're up and down, up and down, all emotional. In and out. Faith today, I love the love today. And they go through something. I ain't coming back to church. It ain't working for me. Uh, and I see, there you go, all over the place. But the things that, that, that we are faithful to, we are really consistent with. Amen? Amen. We're consistent with our job. I don't care who you, if you if, if, if you believe your job will give you a good check or pay you, you will be real faithful to it. Amen. That's just the truth. You're sick, well, whatever. Can't wait to get better so you can go back to work and get your check. Because that's where your faith is in. But the Bible says what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge Him and He'll direct your path. See, when you're sick, the first place you ought to get to is the house of God. I'd rather say, if you were sick, I'd rather for you to come to church. I'm sick, I'm not feeling well, but I want to come to church just to have the church pray with me and get in agreement with you. I don't care if you go back home, at least you put forth that diligence to be in the house when you're sick. To, to, what, the Bible says, if there's any sick among you, let those who are sick call for the elders. That's their right. Ain't my job going to hunt you. You sick? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. But I'll come by and, you know, pray with you and stuff. Even though you didn't bother to let me know you were sick. No, there has to be a point where you have to be diligent about this. Listen, if you really believe God is a healer, diligent people who believe God is a healer, they call that whole. We gotta get, I got to get some prayer in here. I got to get to the house. Amen. I can't get out with the saints Amen. so the saints can get an agreement with me about my healing. Amen. The Bible says one can chase out a thousand, two in agreement can chase out ten thousand. My God, get good ten, twenty saints playing who believe God, man, you go walk out better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Man, I know, but I just you don't you don't have no faith in it. Just lay hands on your own head. <laughs> Say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Because you got to get that. Amen. Come in the house. When you're not feeling well, it's amazing. Now, isn't it true? People will get sick. They have no problem taking themselves to the doctor. Amen. Am I telling the truth, anybody? Amen. Why? Because you believe that doctor can do something for you. But you won't get to the house of God where there's healing. You believe in the shot when you believe in the hand of the Lord. Oh Lord, help us. Oh. Something to think about, y'all. Mm -hmm. It's something to think about. We're not diligent when it comes to the things of God. I'm seeking God out. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. I don't mean I encourage you to go to the doctor if you need to go. But go in faith, believing that as you go, God is Amen. still the healer. And if he is a healer, then get to the house where all of us can agree with you about your healing. Amen. And then go to the doctor. You might get to the doctor, you might find out find nothing wrong with you. Say that. Amen. Say that. You might get there and say, well, you know, you, you had something, but it's like it's going down. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But God is not first. He's like, I'll try God when everything else, and I'll try God mm -hmm. when all the other facts fail me. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess I better get in faith now because the facts ain't working for me. <laughs> But God says, I want to be first. Amen. Put me on the front line of your life, not on the back door. Yeah. Amen. But you got to be diligent in seeking him out. you got to be careful and persistent in your work or effort. Mm. See, it costs something. It costs you something when you're not feeling well and still coming to the house. Amen. You don't feel well. I don't feel like doing it. They don't, don't let your flesh run you. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. You believe God. I believe the Lord. Amen. If there's healing in the house, I need people to go agree with me in faith. Amen. Come on, amen. 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 And people are so funny because they get offended because they don't show up. They expect, they wonder why nobody calls. Nobody calls. It's not our job to call you. You can be on vacation. We, you might not want to be interrupted. Mm -hmm. How are we supposed to know? Mm -hmm. amen. If there's any sick among you, let those who are sick call for the elders of the church. I can respect it. Listen, I can respect it more if you were sick and you really couldn't get out. But you at least call and say, I, I just want, I want you guys to come in and agree in prayer mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. But don't tell me you've been sick like a week, but you've been going to work every day. Oh. Then you can't come on Sunday. <laughs> come on, man. Don't I want to hear that. Don't, yeah. don't hold up now. I'm going to hold up. Shut the front door. What's going on? What's going on? You can make it to work. You can't make it to church. You gave your best to your job, but you didn't give your best to God. All right, man. All right. That's not diligent. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, and the diligent man shall prosper. Man. Prosper in what? Whatever he's diligent about. Yes. If you want to be help, if you want prosperity in your health, be diligent about it. If you want to prosper in your finances, be diligent in, in, in your managing of your finances. Amen. And honor the Lord, the, the Lord and His Word. Amen. Be diligent in it. Amen. Am I helping anybody? Amen. 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 See, verse, Hebrews 11, 6. Now without faith, it is impossible to please God. Think about it. Impo you know what impossible means, don't you? Mm -hmm. It ain't no way. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me about you being a good person. And it's, 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 this is another thing my friend was talking about yesterday I thought it was really interesting. She was saying, they were asking the people, they were asking, she, they said the woman, the, the, the woman who was teaching the class was asking the women the questions, who are you? She said the first person was like, don't mm, ask me. She said, and as she went around, she said, some people started talking about they were a good person, so, and she said, I'm sitting there thinking, that ain't got nothing to do with your identity. You a good person? That's not your identity. That's external stuff. Yeah. Your identity is your internal, not your external. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, so that what that tells me is people really don't know who they are. But here's why I found out: if you are diligent where the Lord is concerned, the Lord will tell you who you are. 
See, you know, I'm talking, we got these banners up. Anybody ever read these banners every time to read them? Identification, mm -hmm. location, and purpose. Who am I, where am I, and what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, this the Lord, these, these three things are what the Lord gave me when he started explaining to me who I was. And I had to be diligent about studying this stuff out and say, okay, show me. He would, he would point me in that direction, and then he'd have, I had to study it out. And the thing that he told me was that, he said, your identity has nothing, your identity is tied to your purpose. But your purpose is not what you go after. That's what those that most Christians want. They want to know that, what my purpose, well, what am I what am I here for? God says, no. Your purpose is what I give you by assignment. Mm -hmm. And it can change. Mm -hmm. You might be a sheep herder today, tomorrow you might be king. Mm -hmm. Your purpose can change. He said, if you define yourself by what you do, then what, what will happen to you when you stop doing it? You will lose your sense of value. Amen. Your sense of value is one thing. Who I am in Jesus. Amen. Has nothing to do with what I do. It doesn't mean it matter if I'm a pastor, I'm an apostle, prophet, man, ushers, floor sweeper, right. greeter. That's not where my value lies. My value lies in the simple fact that when God made me, he made me a diamond. Amen. And I'm a diamond no matter where you put me. I'm still a diamond. Amen. You can put me in the dirt, I'm still a diamond. You can put me on a bookshelf, I'm still a diamond. You can let dust build upon me, I'm still a diamond. My value isn't determined by what I do. My value is determined by who he made me to be. Amen. Say that. Say that. Most folks don't know that. They have no concept. They try to, they like, oh yeah, you know, I got this six-figure job. Yeah, but when you lose that six-figure job, you lose you. Mm -hmm. That's why when people lose their money, they jump out bills and kill themselves. Because they define their value by who they, what they did. You never define your value by what you do. You only define it by who he made you to be. Amen. And for you to find out who you are in Christ, you, it's going to take some diligence on your part to get in the word and believe what God says about you. Not what other people say. You know, no, people have a tendency to treat you differently mm -hmm. based on your status in, in this world system. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the Bible tells us that we're not to be a respect of persons. That's right. We violate the word with that so much. Oh, you know, no, you know, you know, they're real famous in the world. Come on, Oprah, sit on the front. Come on, Oprah, Oprah come on. This creature sit you on the front. I don't care what Oprah sit. You, you just need a word. Amen. I'm saying, hey, nice to meet you. But they ain't, she ain't getting no special treatment. Because she come in the house. That's why we don't have politicians standing up here doing politics, you know, political times. Ain't nobody coming in the house. You ain't that valuable. You are not that valuable. Come on, you're a speed bump in the road to the plan of God. Amen. Now we respect them. That's why we pray for them. But I'm not going to put them up here to, to, to quote their political things and talk about flesh stuff. You know, we need more money in this community. Well, you know, okay, that's great and all, but how about, just, how about get prayer back in the community first? Amen. How about move God back into the community first? How about letting the presence of the Lord sweep over the neighborhood first? How about, how about supporting churches that are preaching the word of God first? How about putting us on TV and, and, and letting us pray for the community? How about doing that kind of stuff? Oh, no, 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 no. Hmm. No, not doing that. Why? Because we're going to be diligent about the things of God. Mm -hmm. We're going to be dealing about the will of God and not about these other, other stuff that people do. It, it, see, just because I say something look good don't mean it's good before God. Amen. And so we don't want to be that. We want to be diligent in the thing that God is calling us to do. And even as we are diligent to do what he's called, then we prosper in every aspect of our lives. Mm -hmm. And most people don't want that because we want to be popular. We want to be popular. Say that. I just, I just want to be in this wheel. I just want to do what I'm called to do. Amen. I do, man. That's the most important thing to me. To know that the Father is pleased with my life. Amen. So he says, look, he said, uh, Now without faith it is impossible to please God, for, for the one who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently search him out. See, if people really believe that, the church will be full. It'll be, it'll, be, it'll be standing room only if people really believe that. That God will reward them simply because they are diligent to seek out his word. I don't need no past. Really? Mm -hmm. I had one person tell me, my, my past my past is uh, the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, do he know you're a member of his church? No. <laughs> do anybody there know you're a member of his church? No. Uh, how can they pray for you? How can they interact with you? 
Come on, How can you be accountable to them? When they in the Bahamas, you're in, in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's foolishness. <laughs> Fool foolishness like that. Yeah. God will call you to a church in the Bahamas. Okay, move to the Bahamas then. Because mm -hmm. if he ain't calling you to move to the Bahamas, he ain't sure not calling call that person to be your pastor. And you just a sheep. But people do that foolishness. See, they do that because they don't want to be accountable. Mm -hmm. Say that. Say that. And when you don't have to be accountable, you don't have to be diligent about anything, who's going to check you? Yeah. That's right. But then the house folk will check you. Mm -hmm. And hold up, you ain't doing that right. Don't tell me I'm doing it right. I do it for the Lord. Well, you're doing it for the Lord, but while you're doing it for the Lord, you better be doing it for us too, because we paying you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I bet like someone paying somebody to cut your yard, and they need grass all over the place. Mm -hmm. All in the driveway, all over the sidewalk, all over your porch, all stuck to your window. Come on, I'm done. I ain't want to do what you tell me to do. I'm doing this for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, you better go talk to Jesus because Jesus will tell you you're doing this wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not diligent. And people do that, use that kind of type of excuse to do what they want to. But diligent, listen, diligence requires a level of accountability. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on, amen. You can't be diligent without having somebody accountable to. Somebody got to check you. Somebody got to say, hold up. You're not doing that quite right. Because you're not an island unto yourself. Amen. See, diligence is a key to prosper. You gotta be diligent. You gotta be careful and persistent with work and effort. You gotta be careful and persistent. Persistence means you you steady. You just steady with it. When the sun is shining, you steady. When it's raining, you steady. When it's snowing, you steady. Mm -hmm. We like that with our jobs. Snow, we go. Mm -hmm. Rain, we go. Mm -hmm. Sun, we go. Now, in fact, some we might call in today because it's too pretty for the work. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty because of the park. But we're pretty steady with our job. Rain, can't go to church. Might mess my hair up. I mean, I hear people like, well, I will go to church, but I think it might rain today. Might? It might. Really? Because it might rain. Well, I will go to church, but it might, it's cold. And it's cold and it might snow. Went to work yesterday, didn't you? It was cold and it might snow yesterday, too, but you win. Well, yeah, but you know, I needed to do that because people were relying on me. Oh, so nobody's relying on you in the house of God? Mm. Not diligent to the things of God. And you can't prosper that way. No. I know this isn't one of those exciting, you know, hooping and swinging from the shadow of the but you know what? It's real practical. It's true. And we really need to learn how to be practical with the things of God. Amen. 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 We need to be diligent. We need to be Amen. faithful to Him. We need to be consistent Amen. with Him in our day-to-day -day walk. And that's all I'm really trying to do today is just encourage you to be diligent in every aspect. Be diligent in your thought life. Be diligent in your words. Be diligent with your actions where God is concerned. That you make him a priority. Amen. And quit letting him fall down on the list of third, fourth, fifth, and last. Mm -hmm. Let him be first. God is about to, our God is a jealous God. Mm -hmm. and he's jealous for us. In other words, he, he created you for himself. And when he sees you using you, for somebody or something else that he didn't create you for, he is jealous for you because he said, that's not why I created you. Amen. I created you with a specific purpose. And when I don't see that purpose being fulfilled in your life, I'm jealous. Because I'm jealous of you. Not <coughs> I'm jealous for you, not of you. I'm jealous for you because I desire to have a, have a relationship with you. I created you for that. All right. And when you don't take advantage of it, he said it hurts. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, think how bad it hurts you when people you love betray you. And then they take that and magnify like 10 billion times. That's how pure God's love is. Just at his capacity to, to love us is so much greater than ours. But it's also his capacity to be hurt is so much greater than ours. When we say God is love, it doesn't mean he has acts of love. It means when love started, it existed with him first. He is the originator of love in its purest form. And he has to we have the capacity to really, truly, and deeply hurt him. Mm -hmm. And we don't think about it. Because we just kind of doing our thing. So be diligent in, in your pursuit of him. Be diligent. Go after him like the deer go after the water brook when it's thirsty. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I was watching something, uh, I think it was a cowboy movie. And uh, the herd hadn't been watered in a while. And so, and, and so the guy was saying, you know, hey, we're, we're approaching the brook. And we need to kind of make sure that we get these cattle, you know, lined up properly. Because if not, when they smell the water, they will lose their minds and just take off. Just get chaos, chaos ensues. 
Because once they smell that water, there is nothing you can do to stop them. They will trample you on the foot to get to water. That's how we should be with God. That no matter what the enemy throws at us, when we smell the scent of God's presence, we'll trap our way heaven, I mean hell and everything else that's trying to stop us from getting to his presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're not that way now. We kind of people relax like today come to church swaggering in, you know, we just swag. You know, come on, let's raise your hands and worship God. Man. You know. Come on, sing, sing a little bit. Uh, sing, sing, sing. I can't sing that well. So. We are lackadaisical when it comes to it. The Bible says make a joyful noise. He knew he didn't give you the gift to sing. But take what you can make and make a, make a loud noise with it. And it pleases him. Amen. All right, prayer. What do we stop having that going on? Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the word today, Lord. We just pray for your people, Lord, that you would help us to be diligent. We would help, you would help us to be careful and persistent in our work and effort towards you. Father, I pray that you would help us to see the necessity of making you the top priority of our lives. That we will, that we will, will not provoke you to jealousy, Father, by giving ourselves to other things and having confidence in other things. Lord, we declare by faith that, Lord, you are the source of our lives. You are our provision. You are the answer to every problem that we'll ever face in this world. And we thank you for just loving us today and, and being patient with us and long-suffering and gracious to us, Lord. And we thank you that you would remind us at times of how you have been loving towards us so that we, in return, can love you back. You are deserving of all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And so we just thank you, we praise you, and we just give you glory today. In Jesus' name, amen.